Hey, it's me, Bruce, and I think it's time for a coffee break. What do you say? So grab that favorite beverage and it's coffee, tea, milk, juice, pop, whatever it is, beer. <laughs> and uh, let's answer a few viewer questions today. But before I get started, I'm very, very excited. I still get excited about getting new tech, but I take my time, my sweet time in acquiring tech. This is something I've been wanting. No, that's the wrong word. Coveting is more like it for quite some time. And that is a new laptop. Now, two years ago, I, I can't believe it's been that long, I bought a MacBook Pro. But I've given it to my wife, and in turn, she handed over her old MacBook Pro to me. And this thing is a 2010 uh, dual core i5, 8 gigs of memory in it. And it's just slow. It's just slow. You can't really use it. Even edit really, you know, video on this thing. You can, but it's slow. So I decided to purchase a laptop, one that I have been debating back and forth about for a long, long time. And I went ahead and finally ordered this machine last Thursday off of Amazon, Amazon Prime. It's supposed to be here next Tuesday. Uh, so we will see about that. It is refurbished. I will tell you that right now. And uh, I'll go into all the details on it on the video. Hopefully when it comes, we'll unbox it. We'll fire it up and take a look at it. Let's get to the questions. And the first one comes from... Uh, Water and Fire 888 writes, Hi Bruce, I'd like to ask you a question. I want to buy a new computer. It's the HP Slimline PC. Intel Core is a 6100T, 2 terabyte hard drive, 12 gigabytes RAM, Intel HD 530 graphics, uh, Windows 10, and do you think this is a good quality computer? I do get asked questions about which computer to buy so many different times. Um, I'm going to put it to you this way. So I, in, th in this particular case, I went to uh, uh, Google. I looked up, I'm not really that familiar with the machine. Looked up, see it Best Buy for 700 bucks. Looking at the specs, you're getting a dual core i3 pro, uh, CPU, tw which is not very powerful. It's, it's not very potent. I, I don't know what you're gonna be using this computer for, but if you wanna do some gaming, if you ever wanna do any video work, uh, that kind of thing, um, that's kind of a not super powerful CPU. You could do better CPU-wise, is what I'm trying to say. 12 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. That's decent. It's uh, better than 8. I'm not sure why they went with that kind of a combination. Anyhow, it goes on a 2 terabyte hard drive. doesn't say whether it's uh, 7200 or, or 5400. That makes a big difference. I'm assuming it's a 7200 RPM hard drive. Uh, 802.11 BG and N. So this does not have a wireless AC, which is really, really important for fast uh, wireless transfers of data. HDMI out, comes with a mouse and keyboard with volume control, DVD burner, and comes with Windows 10, which I'm assuming is probably Windows 10 Home. Now, you're asking about quality, and it's been my experience with HP uh, desktops because I've owned uh, one personally, but uh, I worked at a small business once that had several of them. They tend to be a bit plasticky and the construction's not that good on them. What you will run into is typically underpowered GPUs. The only thing I see about expansion on this is that it does have uh, M.2 port for um, adding a uh, more high-speed uh, SSD, which is kind of cool. I didn't really see much else in the way of expandability. So what you run into is kind of weird parts in these things and that HP gets really, really cheap uh, power supplies um, that are not bronze, silver, or gold, none of that kind of rating on them, generally the underpowered. Kind of weird proprietary type motherboards in them. This machine doesn't have a lot of expandability to it. Uh, and I'm looking at some of the comments on it. A number of people are not happy with this machine if you look at the reviews. Uh, some of them are, uh, apparently they're very noisy, very loud computers. I don't know what you want to use your computer for, but I can tell you this much. With a $700 budget, you can build a much better PC on your own. 
And then what you're going to get with this computer for $700, you're going to be able to get a, a dedicated GPU, for example. You can get a quad core Ryzen, um, what is it, the uh, Ryzen 5 uh, CPU, which is a quad core, their kind of version of the i5. You can get that. You can get a, a GTX 1050 Ti um, and put in there for dedicated graphics. You can have 16 gigabytes of memory. You can get a 450 watt bronze or better uh, GPU. You can get 16 gigabytes of, uh, you know, G-Skill uh, memory in there, for example. There's a whole lot. You can go to PCPartPicker.com, create an account, look at some of the build guides, and they'll give you an idea. Now, if you're reluctant to build your own PC, a lot of people are. I was the first time I built one many, many years ago. Uh, there's there's plenty of people that can. There's uh, there's builders, system builders out there that for a small fee, 50 bucks, something like that, will put the parts together for you and get you up and running. And you can get that $700 budget and have, in my opinion, a su way superior machine that you'll be able to do more with. You'll be able to play modern game titles uh, in, in you know, good settings, high quality, high settings, and get great frame rates. Uh, you won't be able to do 4K or anything with these kind of video cards, but you'll be able to game on it. You'll be able to edit video on it. You can get a, a this doesn't mention having an SSD in it. Uh, I priced out a machine for under $700. I would give you uh, a, you know, 250 gigabyte SSD and two terabytes of uh, hard drive storage on here. So it definitely, if you are not squeamish about building your own machine or maybe having a friend or even a, you know, a PC boutique kind of place, put one together for you. I think you're going to be ultimately happier uh, when you, uh, have a custom PC. It's going to be higher quality parts. You'll know what's in it. Better warranties. Yeah, you you know you don't get the thing from HP. I get that. There is something to be said from buying uh, from HP or Dell or whatever, especially in the business environment. That makes a lot more sense because of the warranty issues. But if you build it yourself or somebody you trust put it together, you get good quality parts. You're going to have a PC that will, I think, outlast. Outlast uh, this machine is going to be faster. You're going to be able to do more with it. And you'll also be able to upgrade it a lot more easily. More ports, more USB ports. Maybe you want to have USB uh, 3.1 uh, in the USB in the C USB C form factor, maybe even Thunderbolt. There's just a lot more you can do with a custom PC than you'll be able to do with this. My personal experience with HP in the past has not been good. Not on the desktop side of things. I think they're laptops. Uh, the only thing uh, have been pretty decent other than the hard drives uh, tend to die uh, kind of early on them. But other than that, um, I think you just do better going with custom. Let's get to the next question. Uh, this is actually a statement from the x who says, I'm so glad to see a veteran of IT on YouTube. I get a swig of coffee here. I do not know you, I do not know you, sir. I'm in the first 10 seconds of the video. So a video had talked about Linux. And I'm writing in this comment uh, with my bad English to let you know that you have my respect. Well, thank you. I think we get, uh, when we get a little bit of gray hair, I think we get somewhat discounted that we're not up to date and not as knowledgeable as people that are younger in the IT business. But we have been there, for, I've been there really from the complete beginning of the personal computer revolution. In fact, I actually got my start on a IBM 360, which was a mainframe on a timeshare, long before there was even a personal computer. So I've been around from that point in time to, you know, today's world of, you know, smartphones and 360 cameras. So I've kind of, I've been lucky. I, I, I view myself as very fortunate to be able to see all this cool stuff happen and take place in my lifetime. And because I have been in on that from the very beginning, I think it gives us some unique insights as to where, you know, where things are, have been or where things have been and maybe even where they're going. Uh, and this is something you learn over time. And I appreciate that uh, someone out there appreciates that, yes, us IT veterans um, are making videos and we're trying to share the knowledge and information 
uh, that we've picked up over decades of experience with machines and networks and on and, and all this stuff. So thank you very much for that comment. Now, the next question comes from a Victor Rakowski. And this is in response to a video we made about these, the uh, Sony AX53. And when I reviewed that, I, I, I had my microphone on top of it. External micro microphone. Victor wants to know, is the microphone you have plugged in very necessary? And I'm going to say unequivocally, yes. Even though it has built-in microphones, even though it can record Dolby Surround 5.1 audio and all this other marketing crap that Sony wants you to believe, the, the very bottom line is the quality of that audio, audio, audio? What kind of word is that? Uh, is piss poor. It, in my opinion, it's just not very good. It would be absolutely worst, last choice to use the built-in microphones on that camcorder. Uh, it's good for scratch audio if you're syncing it up in post with another audio source. Just, you know, spend 40, 50 bucks, whatever, get a decent little shotgun mic, mount up on that thing, and uh, you're just going to get infinitely better audio than what you are with the built-in microphone. Now, I'm going to wrap this, wrap this up with a statement by a wooden person by the name of Wooden PC Users. And I'm just going to, I can't exactly use the same language this person uses, but um, Wooden PC Users says Windows 10 is, we'll could say the word crap. Then writes 0428, which I guess is the date you made this comment. Stay with Windows 7. That is just um, absolutely horrible advice for multiple reasons. First off, Windows 7, mainstream support is stopped for Windows 7. That means no more features are being added to it. I mean, Microsoft is done working on Windows 7. They extended support runs through 2020. Now, it may, they may change it, have a change of heart and even run it longer. Right now, roughly just under a half of Windows PCs are out there still running Windows 7, uh, which is uh, amazing. But here's the problem. If you have somebody seriously take that advice, and let's say they go out and they get a brand new system running Intel 7th generation processors or Cabby Lake, they're going to find out very, very quickly that that CPU is not supported by Windows. And updates and all that's going to get blocked. Microsoft does not want people installing old versions of its operating system on older hardware. And if people follow your advice, they are in for a lot of problems. Microsoft is just not wanting to do that. So you buy a new, you got your new build, you got your Ryzen CPU and all that, and, and suddenly you're not going to be able to get updates to Windows for it. Windows 10 wants to be on modern hardware. Now, I have a 4770K in my gaming PC, and it runs Windows 10 quite happily. Okay. But that's kind of the reverse thing, if you understand how it goes. Uh, this the new CPUs uh, only want to when they when they install Windows say, "Hey, I'm I'm this generation, and I want to have this version of Windows." The older CPUs uh, they don't they don't really care, and uh, so their 4700 series works fine, Skylake, etc. But Cabby Lake, Ryzen, uh, Microsoft's really starting to crack down on this. And they, you got those CPUs, they expect to have Windows 10 as their operating system. Or, of course, if you... Look, the bottom line is, and I think this, and I, and I want to get your comments down below on this. I think the bottom line for all of this is that you've got to make a decision. At some point, you've got to make a decision. Am I going to stay with the Windows ecosystem or am I going to go elsewhere? Uh, because uh, Windows 10 is where it's at. It's where Microsoft's putting all of its efforts into, and they're just not going to want to fool around with uh, older CPUs and that kind of thing. And, and so you got to make that decision. Do you, do you want to stay in the Windows ecosystem? Then it's Windows 10. That's your choice. That's what you got. Or it's time to move on to another operating system. But for heaven's sakes, quit advising people that you need to stick with an operating system that is essentially end of life. 
and there's and and there's no future with it. You can't. You know, you're not going to be able to run modern. What's the, what's the eighth generation of the CPU? Uh, ninth generation. Eventually, they're going to need new hardware, and this is time to make that decision what you want to do. So that is it. I think this will wrap up this installment of Coffee Break. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to your comments down below. Bruce Naylor, take care.